My name is George Garber. I'm a concrete floor consultant. I have been playing around with concrete floor slabs since 1979. I do different things for different clients, but uh, two things that I have a special interest in are floor flatness, uh, testing and, and solving issues that come up in that subject, and wear resistance, that is the durability of the concrete surface. Well, I've used more than one method, but the one that I own and that I've found gives me the most useful results is the Chaplin Abrasion Tester, which was developed at the Cement and Concrete Association in England in the early 1980s. Now there, there are other abrasion tests. There are several of them in the ASTM book. Uh, some of them don't appear to be commercially available. You know, they, they might be good tests, but when I was shopping for a tester, I wasn't able to find one for sale, so that kind of rules it out. Uh, some of them are, are clearly not suited to what I want to do. For example, there's one test that involves pouring the concrete and taking it back to a lab and weighing it before and after. Uh, I wanted a test that could be used in the field on an actual slab in, in place. Uh, so given the availability, given the history and the fact that the Chaplin abrasion tester has been used in multiple countries for multiple decades, uh, and also just a gut feeling that the kind of wear it puts on a concrete slab is similar to the real wear that occurs in a warehouse or a factory. Uh, I mean, no, no test is an exact duplication of what happens in real life, but ideally you want a test that resembles the actual process that takes place on the real floor. And we're mainly worried about floors that have to support wheeled vehicles rolling around. And the Chaplin abrasion tester, unlike some others, has wheels that roll around on the floor, and that's what you're measuring. Uh, well, my definition of concrete strength is, is I guess, straight from the textbook. Uh, to me, strength is the ability of concrete to resist being squeezed or bent or pulled. And uh, you test concrete strength by applying some stress to a concrete sample. You, you try to crush it or you try to bend it or you try to pull it apart and you keep doing that till it breaks. Um, and that's extremely useful if you're trying to determine what loads a concrete structure can support, um, how thick a slab needs to be. You need to worry about the strength of the concrete. Uh, people often use strength as a proxy for other properties, such as wear resistance. And there, I have some problems. Uh, it appears that there is not much correlation between strength measured in the conventional way and the resistance, uh, 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 the resistance of a concrete surface to wear. Uh, now, at the extremes, there probably is some correlation. Uh, you know, if you had concrete with a 2,000 PSI compressive strength, and you compared it with something with a 10,000 PSI compressive strength, yeah, you might find a difference in wear resistance between those two pieces of material. But in, in the normal range of strengths that you find in floor slabs and pavements, there's no good correlation between strength and resistance to wear. Uh, what's, what's happening through the mass of the concrete, its structural strength, has very little to do with the durability of the surface. All right, let's, let's talk about density. Um, we already talked about strength, and, and I said my definition of strength was textbook, and I think it is. Uh, when it comes to density, the way people sometimes use it in the concrete floor industry is not the textbook definition. Um, you know, if, if, if I was taking some kind of test and had to define the density of concrete, I would say it's a synonym for unit weight. How much does a cubic foot of concrete weigh? Uh, now there is some correlation between that kind of density and strength because if concrete is full of air, if it's got a lot of voids in it, it's going to have a lower strength. So there is some connection there. That's not the kind of density that people are talking about when they are interested in wear resistance or when they're talking about a trowel machine densifying concrete or a chemical densifier. So the definition of, of density in that narrow context is a little different. And I'm not really sure exactly what it is, uh, because when we say that a chemical densifies concrete, I'm not sure that that's a property that anybody has a way to measure. Um, certainly, if you weighed a cubic foot of that concrete with and without a so-called densifier, you wouldn't be able to detect any difference. Uh, I suppose the theory is that the concrete surface always has some pores. You know, it, it's not perfectly uniformly smooth on a microscopic level. 
And if you fill those pores with something, you could say that you're making the surface denser. So I, I assume that when somebody talks about a densifier for concrete, they're using density in that, that narrow sense, meaning filling the pores. So they call it density, but it really seems more like smoothness to me. They're making the surface smoother. They're not really making it more dense in a way that, that a physicist would understand density. So clearly, strength and density, if we're defining density in the special sense that is used on floor slabs, are two separate properties and they're largely independent properties. Uh, the things that improve one don't necessarily improve the other. Um, what makes concrete strong is really not much of a mystery, and the people who design concrete mixes are, are more knowledgeable about that than I am. Uh, and to, to put it in a nutshell, you use more cement. I mean, it, it's, it's cement that turns loose aggregates into concrete, and while there are other factors at play, the more cement you put in, uh, the stronger the concrete gets. Uh, putting in more cement will not necessarily result in a denser surface that is better at resisting wear. Now, there may be a little correlation in that if the cement content is extremely low, you simply can't put a good finish on the concrete and then you would have poor wear resistance because you, you, you wouldn't be able to finish it. Uh, but very few mixes are so deficient in cement that that would be a problem. Um, so strength is, at least in the range that we're using it in floor slabs, is fairly straightforward to deal with. Density is, is a little bit different. And it, it's clear, you know, regardless of the theory involved, it's clear from practical testing that two factors that improve the wear resistance of concrete dramatically are the quality of the curing and the smoothness of the troweled finish. So it's, it's clear that the smoother you finish the concrete in the troweling process, the more wear resistance you will get. And sometimes that's called densification. Uh, in fact, when, um, when I first went to England back in the 1980s, I remember listening to a lecture by George Barnbrook, and he was explaining how the troweling process makes floors harder. And he called it densification. He said that you know, as, as, as you angle the trowel blades up and they exert more contact pressure on the concrete, they densify the concrete, it was his word, and they do so by squeezing out the air bubbles and the excess water in the paste. And that made perfect sense to me, but I'm not sure it's right. And, and for years I assumed it was because it, it made sense and there was no question that well-troweled concrete, all other things being equal, had higher wear resistance. But then I got involved in a, in a project where some of the concrete was trowel finished and some was polished. And the areas that were polished, in at least one case, were finished to what appeared to be the same degree of smoothness as the trowel finish. So this, this area had received no densification through troweling. It had been left with a float finish and then polished smooth. But the end result was similar, at least if you ran your fingernail across it, it felt similar in smoothness to the trowel finish. And they also had a polished area that was smoother than the trowel finish because you can do that with polishing if you're prepared to, to spend more money. And what we found, it was almost uncanny, the wear resistance of the trowel finished and the similarly polished finish were identical. So that made me think that maybe George Barnbrook, with all due respect, was wrong about the process. He was right about it working, but maybe we're not densifying the surface by squeezing bad things out, maybe we're just making it smoother. Because strength and density on the floor surface are, are two different properties, one can definitely be achieved without the other. Uh, if you want a hard-wearing, durable surface, you do not have to specify high-strength concrete. Normal strength concrete can achieve good wear resistance or poor wear resistance, depending on what you do to the surface. Uh, and um, you know, by the same token, if you a floor that has very good resistance to wear because of how well it's finished, and because of maybe some surface treatment that's been done to it, uh, doesn't necessarily have high strength. You know, the durability of the surface tells you nothing about the structural capacity of what's underneath. What do I think of E5 so far? I am puzzled. Uh, 
That's probably a good thing if you like E5 because there are a large number of products out there that people recommend for concrete that I think are totally useless. Uh, in fact, I've occasionally told people that if somebody comes along with a product that is meant to harden concrete or densify it or improve it in almost any way and you don't have time to evaluate the claim, just assume it's false because more than half the time it is. Uh, but every so often a claim comes along that is true. And I've seen enough good test results from floors done with E5 to think that there may be something to it and that I need to find out more about it.